Right now, being joined by Eric Hatch, Hatch Coaching, Hatch Realty, and we've got a leadership summit coming up that uh, Eric Hatch is going to be be running. And my understanding is is that this is going to stretch outside of uh, real estate. Is that is that right, Hatch? Uh, you know, we sharpened our swords and got better in real estate. And what we're finding out is that our product and the things that we're teaching uh, have far-reaching uh, intentions outside of just real estate. Uh, what we're finding out is that most people are starving for great leadership in their world. Uh, either uh, you're higher incorrectly or even if you hire right to keep uh, A players with A players and to keep uh, people giving their best every day and inherently playing for the person next to them. And so it's not just a real estate summit. Uh, it will have some realtors in the room, uh, but we're bringing the dichotomy of people from all different backgrounds. So whether you're uh, a banker or an insurance person, uh, if you work in medical, uh, we have police officers coming and firefighters coming. And uh, from every walk of life, anybody who's saying that they want to get better as a leader is who we're reaching out to for this. What are some of the details on it in terms of just kind of the raw date, times, uh, overview, that sort of thing? Right. Uh, January 24th through the 26th in Fargo is where it's going to be. And quite often, uh, many of us will get onto a plane and we'll travel down to San Diego for a summit. And we'll spend literally thousands of dollars on travel and time away from our family uh, to go to a summit or a seminar that's pretty good. And we think we're offering a world-class summit and experience here in Fargo. And so January 24th, uh, that's going to be the evening of. And so most people, if they're in the area or at least nearby, will work uh, a full or a half day before they show up on that Wednesday. Uh, and that Thursday and Friday are, are days heavy laden with training. There's, uh, that Thursday, which is the middle of our uh, event, is going to go everything from 8.30 in the morning until an event uh, later in the evening, engaging people both socially uh, and in a business sort of setting. And then Friday will wrap up around 4 p.m. Uh, so you can get home. And so we're really asking for people to take uh, two to two and a half days out of their regular working world, but to get a world-class experience with what we're doing uh, here in Fargo. Eric Hatch with us, the owner of Hatch Coaching as well as Hatch Realty. And the reason I bring up both of those businesses is not to confuse you, but to kind of set the table a little bit because what Eric Hatch did was he reinvented the real estate industry and he's been endorsed by a number of uh, national uh, personalities and, and businessmen and uh, uh, actually entertainers. I'm looking at Rascal Flatts, Sean Hannity, Barbara Corcoran from ABC's uh, Shark Tank. Of course, you've been um, you've been uh, received kudos from Wall Street Journal as well as Inc. Magazine. Now you've done very well in the real estate world. You've reinvented it, and I kind of like what. Uh, I think Mark J. Lindquist, uh, who's a motivational speaker, who would be deemed somewhat your competition, but he looks at it and he says, no. He goes, Eric's great. He's, do he's doing what exactly people should be doing. He's, he's made some wealth and he's figured out, or not some wealth, he's made some knowledge and he's figured out a way to do it. And now he's passing it on to others. What do, what, what do you make of that? Are you passing on some of this? Uh, I, you know, it's... I'd hate to call it wisdom because you're so young, but yet you've reinvented an industry, so it has to be wisdom. Well, I, I think that I'm too dumb to know any better, Jason. Uh, I, I see something that uh, maybe somebody has tried before or something that just feels natural to how I'm created. And uh, we built our real estate industry. Now we're one of the top 40 teams in the country with what we're doing, and yet we're housed in Fargo, North Dakota. And somebody like Mark J. Lindquist, who is a fantastic speaker and entertainer, uh, world-class with what he does, uh, he and I are, are brothers from another mother, and, and we want to rise the tide for one another. And so I would endorse him saying uh, the things that he's learned and what he's sharing are completely changing the folks that he comes in contact with. And I pray that that's my message, is that the folks that I get the privilege of coming in contact with and working with are, are transformed. And it starts with the inside out. Uh, if you want to transform a business or if you want to transform a working world that you're in, it starts with your own transformation. From there, it's uh, distilling and empowering and impacting those who you hold closest. It's your team to impact that. And yes, your clients benefit from all this, but where uh, when a leader gets better, Jason, everything gets better. And I'm convinced that we have this broken idea that we have to gain knowledge from miles and not from local. 
what I mean by that is it's so easy for somebody to go down to Atlanta, Georgia, or to bring somebody up from Atlanta, Georgia, to then validate them as somebody who is an expert in their field. And yet it's very difficult to be a prophet in your own land. And we're here with this leadership summit to say that we can be prophets in our own land, that Fargo has world-class education and experiences and knowledge to enrich other people's worlds. Now, I can boast and say that we're one of the top small businesses to work for and that our retention rate is nearing 90% with what we're doing. And those are things I'm really proud of. Or we can talk about the success of sales and other things that get people excited, but that just becomes a measuring contest of who's best. The thing I'm most proud of is is the happiness that exists in my heart and the people who are in my world. Uh, our, our organization says that they hate Fridays and they love Mondays. And that when they walk into the lunchroom, that they, there's never that person that they're dreading seeing. And that we play for our brother and our sister next to us. And in fact, uh, if, if you're listening locally, you know that NDSU has an amazing record of their football team. And if you watch interviews and they say, what is it uh, about this bison culture that's so special? And they say, I play for my brother next to me. And we think that that can happen in the workplace. We think that when you enrich yourself as an individual and you pour into other people, you're going to have more than you ever started with. Eric Hatch, owner of Hatch Realty, as well as Hatch Coaching. They have a leadership's coming, leadership summit coming up January 24th through the 26th in Fargo, North Dakota. I have a couple uh, more questions for you here. Uh, one of them uh, I was going to ask you about the TEDx, and uh, we'll get into that next because I, I understand that you're, you're involved uh, again with another TEDx. Uh, but you mentioned the word uh, leadership and a few things along those lines. And I'm working on a story right now where in the oil and gas industry, they have had to re- invent their business model. So here I've talked to like a Harold Hamm and I've talked to a James Volker from Whiting as well as, uh, you know, some of the other, John Gibson from uh, One Oak. Those are the three who specifically said, uh, Jason, uh, hydraulic fracturing, horizontal drilling forced us to rewrite our business plan. So it's a cultural change as well. Now, you know, as well as I do, my, my industry, the media, I've had to reinvent my business. What am I going on my 12th time in the last 10, 10 years? <laughs> and so, but you look at the Boston Herald just filed bankruptcy the other day, the, the New York Times, and uh, I'm sorry, the LA Times made, made profits for 110 years. The internet comes along 10 years later, they file bankruptcy. So the media is reinventing themselves as as well. Therefore, that culture changes. I had Doug Burgum on my program the other day, Lynn Hel- uh, governor of North Dakota, had Lynn Helms on from the uh, Oil and Gas Commission, as well as a couple other leaders in industry. And I'm asking this question, and I'll ask it to you. Is it time for leaders to reinvent their business plan? Uh, yes. And I would put a giant exclamation point in front and behind that. Uh Leaders have to be able to inspire, and leaders can't stay stagnant with what was. Uh, we, we, we're in a time when, when 50% of home buyers right now are millennials, are people under the age of about 35 or 36. And, and I fall in this interesting blend where I'm like right in the middle of millennials and Gen Xers. And so I get a unique perspective of both sides. And I've learned, just as you've learned, that as Internet and technology and and cultures and dichotomies shift, that a leader has to shift with them in order to stay relevant. And I think that's been one of our distinct advantages is we figured out how to run uh, a world and an environment where both can exist, from boomers to Gen Xers to uh, millennials and everything in between. And if, if I were a leader that was stagnant and staying in my own space and place, I would want things to be the way they were yesterday. And maybe we desire that, uh, and yet the landscape has changed. Uh, The topography of our industries have changed, and we need to change along with it. Uh, 